Somebody sent me a link to this Facebook page, and I think that this is really cool. This is some of the best evidence out there that great apes are made for Hollywood. And there's literally no difference between Hollywood fursuits and what you can see behind the glass at the zoo. If this mask was put in a zoo alongside a fursuit, nobody would question it. But it's admitted that this is a fursuit. And yeah, this is how good the fursuits can look. And it can get even more complicated. The, the gorilla suits, they start to put animatronics into the the mask itself because i don't i don't think this one has animatronics built in but the this person kevin yager uh they do also have animatronics on their personal web page and this is a really cool topic this i think is as, as important as flat earth because it shows you their agenda when when people start waking up to conspiracy and the satanic agenda, they they wake up to what I think it's it's kind of obvious in hindsight that their deceptions, their most prized their their favorite deceptions, the ones that they need the most are the ones that directly contradict the Bible and that change people's world views in ways to eliminate God. That is what the big satanic agenda is. And to me, it's interesting that churches have done a really good job of not backing down on the evolution topic and saying, nope, we don't believe in evolution. We believe in intelligent design. I think that's really interesting that they've been able to hold on to that for so long. I think that they need some better arguments. Specifically, the fursuit argument is so good. It just obliterates when it, it undoes the magic. That's the thing. But I, I just find it very interesting that so many Christians keep firm in their anti-evolution beliefs. And I mean, I applaud that. But I think that there's a lot of clowns that they put on the world stage. Like, oh, look at the banana fits a, a monkey's hand or whatever. Like that person's obviously a clown purposefully giving a bad argument. I think that the, the best argument is to say that God made biology highly adaptable. The timelines that they talk about with evolution is a bunch of BS, millions of years. No, no, no. Things adapt quickly. And so uh, God made this place with life being able to adapt. That's not evolution over millions of years. And the fursuit thing, really, man, uh, learning that great apes are an entire deception and not even a real animal, that makes it clear that humans are so different than animals. Even though I, I think that that's probably just part of it, that people don't fall for the BS and they know that there's something special about humans, regardless of the, the fake apes. So yeah, to finish my thought, I think it's interesting that it seems most churches are very steadfast with their denial of evolution but then they believe all the ball earth stuff. To me, that's fascinating. Why Why are they so good at, at standing firm in, even though they won't call out the fake animals for being fake, at least they say that evolution's wrong and intelligent design is correct. But in the same, they'll say that God designed gorillas and stuff. They're still deceived. But anyways, I just think it's interesting, this distinction between that and the, the baller stuff. Because I, I haven't heard of any mainstream church out there that says, oh, we believe in biblical cosmology. So I just find an interesting um, difference in that. Has anyone ever tried to talk about fake animals to, to religious people, to pastors, to talk about evolution? I'd be curious what, what they think about gorillas being fursuits and how chimps, they're just a fursuit that they use to convince people that humans are monkeys. Let's get into the meat of this video. Thank you to whoever sent me this link. Better than the CGI in the new films. They should have hired you. Well, they did hire this person. This person worked on Face Off. The director of Face Off was so pleased with the special effects, face switching effects, that he canceled the computer effects touch-up work. CGI, with all the AI stuff today, it's getting pretty good. But for the most part, practical effects look better than CGI. And these fursuits are amazing practical effects. 
Here it talks about a, fur, a fat suit. And what I thought was really important here was the last sentence. Such commendations are what drive the efforts of Kevin and his crew. Well, what co what commendations? The prosthetics were convincing enough to fool viewers into thinking Cage had actually gained the weight himself. So fooling viewers, being told that the prosthetic was so good that it fooled people, those are the condemnations or the commendations that are driving the efforts of these people. They love to fool people. They love to do this. This is what they do. That's what their craft is, is to come up with something so convincing that it can fool people. This guy made some really cool looking dogs that if you stuck them in certain scenarios, nobody would be able to question if that's a real dog. It looks exactly like a real dog. Same way with the fursuits. It's all about the context. If they take a fursuit and they stick it behind a Nat Geo thing, it becomes real. If they take the fursuit and they stick it inside of a zoo behind plexiglass, it becomes real. That's how it works. It works on magic. Uh, here, I think it's interesting, the orange light that's being cast on this. Finishing up detail, then it's mold time. If you've been around my channel a while, you know how I feel about orange. I haven't seen these videos yet, so we are watching them together for the first time. There might be audio, I don't know. So this is the clay model, I'm assuming. Oh, this is just a picture. <laughs> I took a picture first to tell us what the next video is. The chimp mold is now finished, pulled a quick test skin, checked fitting, pulling final skin, then on to paint. What? <laughs> I'm sure they put fake teeth in those. And yeah, the gorilla, there's gorilla masks that have full-on animatronics in the suit. But a lot of times I think they're, they're like this, where they don't have the full-blown animatronics going on. Some of the pandas, there's a weird panda thing that I'll have to show, where this panda makes a grimace face when they snap bamboo. Anyways, I think some of the bigger suits do have animatronics built in, but I think they will give this, like, fake teeth in... You saw him, like, suck the mouth in in the very end there. I don't think they're going to leave it all vacuous like that in the final suit. Still painting final chimp skin, but stop to try it on with contact lenses. I think it's interesting. I think that this person's stuff is not being promoted on purpose because they don't want the cat to get out of the bag. How does, this is so interesting to me, and it only has 119 thumbs up or hearts, and he's doing all these hashtags, hashtag chimp, hashtag chimpanzee, ape, apes, this should be going viral. I think it's very interesting that this guy, I mean, he has a decent amount of followers, but not millions. This person is making lifelike, as in literally the exact same thing that you can see behind Nat Geo. Or maybe so this guy's just more of a fringe doing it himself. I, I think that they're suppressing this guy's videos on purpose. That they don't want the secret out of the, out there. That they don't want people connecting the dots. Like, hey, why does, why does this look exactly like any other chimpanzee? That's just the question that I would start with people. 
is if this was behind a zoo plexiglass, would it, would you not think that it was real? Of course, this guy's wearing like a sweatshirt, but you pair this with the fursuit and this isn't done yet. He, we got a couple more videos to watch. If this was packaged in a Nat Geo documentary, would this not pass as a real, would not everybody assume it's real? There's no difference between this, what's on Nat Geo, what's in the zoos. There's no difference. Started punching hair into the chimp mask. Should be finished in a couple days. Then on to hands. These are works of art. They take a long, long time. These are skilled craftsmen, craftspeople. And it's a Hollywood thing. There, I think it was on this guy's website that was mentioning Face Off. Or, oh, yeah, it was Face Off. I think Face Off was also the name of a challenge, like a, a show where special effects people were challenging one another. This is just, it's a, a baffo industry making these suits. And it's been going on since the last reset. They've always been doing this stuff. And so this is a, a long tradition making realistic fursuits. I mean, it reminds me of wigs too. And wigs used to be such a big deal. And especially with the upper class people, wigs can be lifelike to the point where there's literally no difference between, you cannot tell the difference between a really, really high quality wig that's been applied professionally. You can't tell. Uh, I mean, maybe if you get in with the, that's like, it, same thing with these chimps. The only way to know what they tell us our suits are so incredibly lifelike and they look the exact same as anything that we've ever been told is supposed to be real like there's no way to know unless you actually were there but then that's the problem of nobody has access and all we get are stories you have to be an illuminated individual to gain access to these fursuits and so they've created an impossible situation where nobody can verify for themselves even though they show us that hey we can make uh, they don't they don't readily show you this stuff though that's why i think that this guy's stuff doesn't have as many hits as it should because i don't think that they they want you to know usually when they show you something that is a known suit it purposefully looks busted that's kind of a, a thing with the media is that let's say there's a tv show and they're gonna tell you something's a gorilla suit they make it look obviously bad, like 99 cent store rubber mask gorilla suits. They'll talk about those a lot, but they don't really like to talk in depth or showcase this type of really good looking suit. It does not get the attention that it should deserve. If this was behind a zoo and it had the, the fursuit to go along with it, of course, this is just the mask. But if this was back in a zoo, if this was slapped with Nat Geo in front of it, nobody would question if it's a real one or not, because they all look like this. Well, here's the last video. This one is camera ready. This one is ready to be two centimeters away from plexiglass in a zoo. <laughs> that must be from face off. Oh goodness. <laughs> Some disturbing uh, <laughs> bonus footage. Thank you again, whoever sent me the link to this. Really fascinating. I'll leave a link in the description and in the comments to this guy's Facebook page. You can go check it out if you want. Hope you enjoyed this video. God bless everyone.